Hey guys, uh, good morning. Let's get going. <clears throat> We're looking at uh, benefits overview and like we discussed yesterday, uh, we'll be doing a few questions and completing certain other portions within this. Uh, slightly under the weather, so might not be, uh, you know, the usual in the class that I had uh, said yesterday. So that's kind of a good news. Uh, but anyways, let's keep moving forwards and uh, try and complete as much as we can. Uh, there are certain concepts from within benefits that I really want you guys to cover and understand. And that will append our understanding and help us in being able to understand like what are the different uh, you know varieties uh, within benefits that we need to be aware of and uh, given that in a lot of cases you know people have certain misunderstandings specifically when it comes to defined benefit scheme so we'll also cover that right now one of the key differentiators like we just discussed yesterday between a defined benefit and a defined contribution scheme was in case of defined benefit the formula for calculation of benefit is given up front in case of defined contribution only the formula for your contributions are given up front you are not really aware of what is the exact amount that you'll end up getting at maturity. It will, you know, will accumulate at a certain rate. You might be aware of what the rate is right now, but that need not necessarily mean that you will be aware of what the rates are going to be next year. Classic example, we took one yesterday was your EPFO. Every year at the start of the year, you know that EPFO is going to pay you a certain rate of interest, which is 8%, 9%, 7.9%, 9 something of that sort, but we don't really know what it's full accumulated value is going to be. Uh, so that's like a classic differentiator between uh, uh, the two. So you, you don't really know what my accumulated value at the end of 30 years is going to look like. Now, because defined benefit scheme is considered, you know, that you know, only your benefits are defined using a particular set of formula, I want to understand from you, are there any contributions made in case of a defined benefit scheme? Listen to the question very carefully, understand the meaning, and try to come across what you think might be the right uh, you know, thought process in this. Are there any contributions within defined benefit scheme? All right. Yeah, the stem over here, I mean, one of the most of the people, whatever you're writing is absolutely bang on. There can be, there may not be. So yes, there uh, ideally there should be is, is what the understanding over here has to be. So the question ultimately boils down to one thing that if let's just assume that defined benefit scheme, maybe there are, you know, contributions being made, who is making those particular contributions and who identifies how much contribution needs to be made? And what is the pattern of these contributions if someone wants to take a, you know, just a, a simple crack at it? In case of a defined benefit scheme, who identifies how much contribution is to be made and who makes these contributions? And then comes a lot of, uh, you know, technical words that we said yesterday, which were Kind of left out yesterday. So let's just look at that. Uh, employer, government, employer, not entirely. I mean, all of them basically come together, and in a lot of cases, you know, contributions are made. So let me just put out a simple structure so that you know there is complete clarity on a lot of technical words which are being used uh, within this. Just give me one. So idea over here is kind of simple to understand give me just one second so yeah just one second. right say so structure like them can say just have a look at this how it really works is that you would usually have an employer let's just say a private employer as the case may be and you would have an employee working for that particular employer. Now, most of us, uh, I mean, most of the people over here in the class, you would usually be known to the structure when an employee 
snakes or the flow is not like this actually the employee makes certain contributions which are basically transferred on to let's just say a fund or in this case let's just put it epf only because this is what we actually do plus the employer also and ends up you know and you know he puts up certain contribution as well so hamare salary ka 12% and employer also adds 12% on top of that so a total of 24% gets deposited into epfo it accumulates until retirement and we get the money back at retirement this is how your defined contribution scheme basically works now let's try to understand defined benefit scheme ka ek simple structure which is representative of you know how usually things end up working so in case of a db scheme what is usually going to happen two things are of course going to remain constant you will have an employer and you would have an employee working for him now in this case what happens is your contributions are not fixed so contribution jo aapko whatever amount is put every month or every year this amount is basically not fixed but one thing is fixed that my payments on maturity are defined this can be by way of certain formula it can be a fixed amount of 1 lakh rupees per month i'm not really fixated at that but my payment ka formula is basically known at up front however in order to ensure that after the end of the tenure after you know you've retired there should ideally be sufficient money kept aside in order to ensure that your money is basically parked safe and sane and that you have sufficient money after your retirement to meet your monthly payments day to day expenses or whatever the case is so what structure is usually put over here is that employer will put up a separate trust this trust will be observed by a trustee and we'll get a very brief understanding of what trust is what trustee is what sponsor is because in this case is a lot of people end up making mistakes ki sponsor of a db scheme the word it comes i mean in a lot of cases and people really don't understand what what they're really trying to say uh, or or what they really mean behind this so the employer basically creates a separate trust this trust is observed by a trustee and you have basically a sponsor sponsor as the name prescribes is the person who sponsors or makes payments and now this is nothing but the employer only the employer himself is the sponsor now the reason why there is this differentiation why do we have sponsor and why don't we exactly say employer itself now there is a reason behind that the reason is twofold first thing first the someone want to take a crack at why do we have to create a separate trust a separate trust it's a separate legal entity again it is entirely different from this employer let's just say if this is say suppose tata steel or tata group this trust is absolutely separate this can be tata trust or something like that right first question is why create this why have this complexity why can't employer just have a fund of his own within which he contributes and makes payment to the employee why do we not follow this instead of following this invariably you have to create a separate trust and you know uh, meet everything i mean make all the contributions over there so first question to you is why do we have to have this structure to keep books separate is is one reason the funds cannot be used for other purpose that is a better reason which is basically the funds cannot be used for any other purpose basically over here what will happen is even if the sponsor or tata steel were to fail tomorrow even if it is no longer let's say functional despite that you would have a separate trust which means this money is separate from this company every contribution made to this trust is separate from the employer which means after you have retired as an employee at the age of 60 years when you have retired this money is separate which means even if tata steel is not operational at that point of time at least there is some safety for your money however you have to be very careful about it that despite that being a separate trust it does not mean ki employer fail hone pe there won't be any impact on it because understand it is just to minimize the impact it is not to negate it entirely 
if Tata Steel fails tomorrow, let's just say after 20 years it fails, and say suppose uh, you have retired, there is no one to put contributions into that fund, right? Nobody is putting in money into that fund. So it is definitely going to exhaust at a particular point of time. So what it does is, number one, it reduces the risk overall. You have lesser amount of risk as a result of you know having the separate legal entity format, but it does not take out risk. So be careful, it's lesser risk, not taking it out completely. So be very careful about this. It leads to lesser risk, but the risk is not taken out completely. Next thing is you appoint a set of trustees, and these are again independent group of respectable people so first is they have to be independent this is a necessary condition respectable may or may not i mean it's a subjective thing but independent now what do why do you have a set of trustees who are independent now these trustees they get salary from this trust only they get the salary basically from through this employer only and they are the ones who manage the entire fund which means they set up all the needs and requirements over here, they set up basically the functions as if okay, how many fund managers to hire, what are the areas allowed to invest, investment committee ka report, what frequency will be there, and you know what will be the report, whether it will be disseminated or not, funding level, kitna hai, whether it is adequate or not. All of these things are basically taken care of by these trustees only. So in order to ensure that you know any good times or bad times of the company doesn't basically impact this fund, that is the reason why you have a separate set of trustees who are employed in order to ensure the best or you know the financial well-being of this particular trust. So first thing is you open up a trust. The reasons are clear for that. Next thing is you appoint trustees, and these trustees are there for the best or you know the well-being of these employees. They're not for the well-being of the employer, they're there for the well-being of these employees. They end up asking for, you know, funds from this employer. If at all there is a shortfall, they end up identifying the shortfall and then, you know, try to bridge the gap accordingly. Now, one thing which I want to understand from you, and again, it should be a simple, relatively simpler question uh, based on, you know, what discussions we've had so far. How do you identify if there's a shortfall? How do you identify if there's a shortfall? One word, very good and a simple answer. That is basically evaluation, and that's where you know usually done by the actuaries, correct? Actual valuation is what you do. You end up identifying what is the present value of benefits based on the number of employees that there are. You use a lot of you know assumptions and say that okay, based on the current status that we are at. Let's just say our uh, value of liabilities is, say, suppose 5 billion. Against that, we're holding on to assets which are only 4.5 billion. And hence, we can conclude that there is a shortfall of 0 0.5 billion, which is usually asked to be bridged by these set of trustees. And they will try to you know, manage or bridge this over a period of next two years, three years, four years, five years, whatever the case may be. Very similar to all of these was a question that came last time in CP1 uh, itself. So, do ensure that you're looking at that question and able to understand, you know, what is it that they're actually uh, trying to, uh, you know, ask you out of it. So employer puts up a separate trust. That trust is governed by a set of trustees who employ fund managers and they end up taking care of all of the decisions regarding where to invest, what to invest, how much to invest, what information should be given, what information should not be given, what should be the frequency of giving those information. Why at all should all of those information be given? Is there a shortfall? If there is a shortfall, why is it so? And how to bridge that particular shortfall, whether I want to bridge that in the next one year or whether I want to bridge that in the next five years. Now, a very, uh, let's just say, it's, it's a higher order question for now, but it's a very, I would say, common question that keeps coming every now and then. Say, suppose I repeat that particular example. Maal lete hai ki, uh, Tata still fails, let's just say. And one thing you have to be, you know, agile to understand is by the moment Tata Steel is failing, you will have to understand that the last few years might not have been very straightforward, which means contributions may not have been sufficient. As a result of which, it is a reasonable assumption to make that, you know, at the point where it failed, the PV of liability was, say, suppose 5 billion. And now the PV of assets is, say, suppose 4.5 billion. 
which means there is a funding shortfall of 0.5 billion now what are the alternatives which are available in this particular situation what or let's just say alternatives is a broad word what action can you take at this particular juncture and when i say you you are basically an actuary or let's just say a trustee or you know advisor to trustee let's just put it this way you are an advisor to the trustee or ye aapko aisa situation dikh raha hai what will you do in this particular situation just you know i just need broad understandings aditi has given one good uh, opinion you can make pro pro proportional payments that is a that is one valid answer what what else can you think of what are the other factors which you can think can be applied over here let's just say a question aa gaya based on all the information that you have only so far let's just say it's a seven or six marker question now making proportional payments is one such alternative you let's just say you get 0.5 or one mark out of it given that you explained it thoroughly what are the other alternatives that you can think of and be very practical aise practical questions hi aayenge exam mein come on guys participate and if you if the question is not clear or if the you know entire flow chart is not clear more than happy to reiterate uh, but you have to let me know all right now i like the points that are coming no high risk investment or thinking on 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 you know separate parameters so make proportional payments that is right other assets of the company after paying debt holders uh ठीक है अभी के लिए इट इज फाइन इट्स नॉट अ वैलिड आंसर बट आई विल आई विल गिव यू दैट फॉर द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ टाइम एट लीस्ट यू नो योर थिंकिंग एवरीवन एल्स व्हाट व्हाट डू यू थिंक विल बी डन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन टाटा स्टील हैज फेल्ड 5 बिलियन की लायबिलिटीज है 4.5 बिलियन के एसेट्स हैं व्हाट आर द एक्शंस दैट यू कैन पॉसिबली टेक इट्स अ 6 मार्क क्वेश्चन आई एम जस्ट आस्किंग फॉर वन लाइनर टू लाइनर ब्रॉड हेड्स आई एम नॉट आस्किंग यू टू एक्सप्लेन दोस पॉइंट्स gradual increment of contribution for from employer now this is an absolutely wrong answer in this particular situation because your employer has failed is the first you know first thing that has that has the first logical stem in this so employer's a contribution forget it for now and that is why you need to curate your answers because now that em employer has failed you can't really anticipate getting any money out of it invest in stable theek hai investment perspective let's just say investment me you right bring stability of investment once you have read investment you will also know that there is something called uh, alm you can match your assets liabilities in a better way as well in case there is a mismatching you will ensure that that can be taken care of other group entity may contribute for shortfall theek hai this is this is one valid answer which i can say that group entity may if there is something else that can contribute to a shortfall now this is thinking out of the box so first is other group entity what else again out of the box government assistance program absolutely correct you can seek certain and there's a word for that we'll look at that late, later on but okay there can be some assistance programs fpp hota hai not in india but yeah fpp is the correct uh, this thing similar to that question also uh, which was given to you the actuary wala jo ek question tha Uh, based on conflict of interest now the discussion that the reason why i am discussing this is not to waste anyone's time it is to ensure that you know what we had discussed earlier wherein you pick up a particular point and exhaust it jo humne bola tha i want you to think you know through that you know think in that way i just want you to have a logical thought process in your thinking now let's just say acha maine let's just let me just you know work with you guys in this And let us try to ensure and and wherever you have any bit of difficulty, just let me know. And this is the gradual thought process that I want you guys to develop as we are kind of moving ahead. Okay. So first thing that someone said was, sorry, just one second. A very valid point that initially someone said was some proportionate contribution or something like that, right? Proportionate contribution, yeah, for contribution reduction, something of that sort. Reduction के बारे में someone had said. Now, when I look at this point, I would want to say at least I do three points. Make sure, right? 
So yesterday we had had a look at there are three different varieties of individuals which can be, which is basically your uh, current pensioners. Second one is your active members who are contributing, and sec third one is basically your so there's current pensioners active and there is uh, deferred members. Now, when I'm talking about this particular proportionate reduction, I have to be a little, I can take one step further and increase the depth of my points. Why or, or rather how? What you know by mentioning that, okay. First thing and first and foremost is 4.4 billion ke liabilities, sorry, 4.4 billion asset, 5 billion liabilities, 0 0.5 billion ka shortfall. Now, first thing you want to address is whether this 0 0.5 billion ka shortfall is divided equally between all these three. If you be if you feel that you know it is divided equally, then you know proportional contribution. That is what you can reduction is what you can write and then move ahead. But one more step that follows logically right after this is it might make more sense to reduce the benefits of actives and deferreds by a greater proportion, not for the current members, right? Because if you're a currently retired person, you can't really have other sources of income. You're highly reliant on this particular thing. Here, if you 10% reduction, kar dete ho iska, for a person who is currently retired and receiving active uh, you know, pension, in that case, it's not a logical thing to do or rather unethical thing to do. Might be logical, but not ethical. So what you can do in this case is, and again, it increases the depth of your point by mentioning that if the scheme rules allow or if the regulation of the country allows, you can write whatever way. In that situation, you can probably not reduce the contribution of current members or reduce it by a relatively lesser proportion and pass on the burden on to active members and deferred members at a greater proportion. So your one point which you just mentioned about, you know, contribution reduction can lead to at least two to three varieties of point. And this will, you know, increase your point from 0 0.5 to 1.5, something of that sort. So that is the thought process that needs to come. Now, proportional reduction, may I cannot think of anything. If you can, then let me know. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next thing, which was investment. So now when I'm talking about investment, investment, may I can think of a lot of things right now. First thing is that there is a mismatch over here. So I need to ensure that, and this will come later on, so you don't have to worry. I'll improve the ALM. Second thing with an investment that I can think of is, I will ensure that I'm moving on to safer assets. Third thing that I can move, or, or you know, third thing which I can try to do is, basically try and ensure that stable equities or something of that sort, but let's just say if it gets covered within assets, I'll try to ensure that timing of, assets and timing of liabilities is matched. I will also try to ensure that it is within a reasonable risk. I can't increase the risk right now because no contributions will be received. So investment have to be made with reasonable risk, matching timings, no asset liability mismatching, and I have to move to safer assets. Within this, although I could think of two, three more points, but I will bifurcate those into operational. Now what I can do operationally is, Number one, reduce my expenses. Because I mentioned that this is a separate trust, iske separate trustees, honge, separate fund managers, honge. all of those people will lead to a larger amount of expenses being incurred, right? But my contributions are no longer going to come, which means if my cost is stable and contributions are not coming anymore, in that case, spreading out is not going to happen, which means the cost burden is gradually going to increase. So as a result of this, what I can do is move on to cost reduction program. How can I do that? Maybe, you know, retire some of the fund managers. I think I can do that. Or what I can do is maybe reduce their salary. This might sound a little, you know, pessimistic, but that is what I'll probably need to do. I can also pass it on, pass on the entire scheme to someone else to take care of. Ki abhi mein fund managers employ kar rahe, who are, you know, incurring a lot of expenses for me, given that in the future, I don't anticipate any more you know, money coming in, what I can do is I can basically pass it on to someone else, like let's say an insurance company. Entire fund, I can pass it on to an insurer and that will help my cause in a great way because entirely when I'm passing it on to insurer, it's his liability now. This will also help me in one more thing. Ki abhi mera mismatching kya hai? If you think of it right now, my mismatching is 4.5 versus 5. Agar main khud match, if I'm doing it by myself, if I'm taking care of it by myself, Maybe by making good investment, I can match it also. 5 versus 5 bhi kar sakta. But if I do poor investment, then this 4.5 can also become 4 or 3.75. Which means there is a risk of overperformance or poor performance when I'm managing it by myself. 
but when i'm passing it on to a third party administrator like an insurer in that case i am at least sure of no further losses i am at least sure that 4.5 versus 5 is maintained so this is again an incremental step that i want you to think through that ye bhi ek lens ho sakta hai sochne ka anything else talking taking out insurance for meeting shortfall if unable this is also something that can be done that you taking out an insurance now this is a different thing first was i passed it on to an insurer and later on you will realize there are three ways to doing it passing it on can be one is you are giving him admin ki aap aa jao because you know you as an insurer you are handling a lot of things for our fund manage the admin at your end this is one way this does not pass the risk but it reduces the cost risk nahi jata hai but cost kam ho jata hai second thing which you can do is take out an insurance just like what aditya has mentioned ki if there is a shortfall in that case they will you know provide you with payment third thing which you can do is pass it on entirely ki entire assets liabilities are basically passed on to the insurer which means insurer will take it on maybe he will also add some profit margin to it so instead of administering 4.5 he will probably administer at 4.4 billion of course you are taking a hit of you know 100 million in this case but this you know passing it on basically means that now you are assured that 4.4 billion ka payment is going to be made so this is the thought process that you need to develop within this question and question like this now this is your matlab this is how your answers should flow not immediately it won't happen right now but i'm just trying to instill a thought process within this now one of the other reasons abhi tak kisi ne ye nahi bola ki one reason i gave you was sponsor and employer are basically you know one and the same is there a situation where an employer is someone else and sponsor is someone else most of the times your employer and your sponsor are the same but there can be certain situations where your employer and your sponsor are not exactly the same they are representative but they are not exactly the same people <clears throat> sponsor can be government government can be sponsor active passive nice so there can be certain uh, situations and if you were to just look at it a, a classic example can be an industry uh, wide uh, you know defined benefit scheme so for example let's just say uh, kanish you work at hdfc life aditya you work at icic prudential life uh, kajal let's just say you work at swissri whatever so there are 15 10 15 of us working at 10 15 different life insurance companies instead of having a single defined benefit scheme at each and every company level you just have one collective db scheme which is basically called all india life insurance defined benefit scheme for example now in this case your sponsor is going to be that collective industry wide uh, scheme which is again a different entity which is formed in order to ensure that even if one employer fails man lo worst case scenario tomorrow hdfc life fails there is an industry wide basically a uh, you know a defined benefit scheme which is created which is your sponsor in this particular case which will ensure that failure of one or two entities does not really impact the entire ecosystem or certain example just like we have discussed right now can also be tata uh, uh, trust instead of having tata steel trust when you have a tata trust it helps your cause why tata steel may fail tomorrow but contributions will still continue how the contributions may come from tata pcs basically for example or there are many other tata technologies there are many other companies within tata which can continue to provide those contributions right and government can be a sponsor which is a classic example one of the ones that i can remember immediately because we had worked with them some time back is basically ontario uh, teachers pension board yeah otpb now this is a separate entity it is basically a, a, a defined benefit scheme uh, or, or a trust Or, or a pension board which is created specifically for one province of canada which is ontario as a province and it only meets the needs and requirement of government teachers of ontario today they are sitting on a total assets under management of 250 billion 250 or 300 billion something of that sort which is what they have accumulated over a certain i mean today even if they don't contribute the amount is sufficient to meet the needs and requirements of all the uh you know uh, uh teachers in ontario 
and they are you know using all the incremental funds and they are deploying it across the globe including india uh and you know in, i mean including the likes of a few startups that you might be uh, you know utilizing the benefits of as well so it's basically a canadian pension near who is basically contributing which and, and the money is basically flowing down to us and getting you know invested in the indian startup ecosystem the benefit of which we are utilizing of course their idea is to make money out of it but whether or not that happens it's a separate case so that is the level of you know complexity or let's say the level of connectivity uh, which can actually arise in uh, today's modern world and, you, and and it's it it, it all it of course helps uh, you know being able to understand all of this so this is your entire structure one the biggest reason why i wanted to discuss and the, let's just say baki sara cheez might not be that relevant but a few things which are of course super relevant for you is to understand the trust uh, system within this next one is to understand that sponsor kya hota because the word sponsor comes and repeats every now and then and people uh, uh, sometimes are not really clear that you know sponsor is nothing but 99% of the cases i'm only talking about the employer in this case in a lot of cases people look at the word contribution and the word contribution dekhte unko lagta hai ki we are talking about a defined contribution scheme which is again an incorrect way to think about it so be very careful about these things and one more thing which people end up making mistake is the moment i am talking about contributions being made into a fund your mind is already you know thinking about defined contribution scheme that is not necessarily going to be the case so you have to be very careful about the fact that contributions can be made in a db scheme also i would rather not use the word can they rather should be made in a uh, 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 sorry uh, a db scheme as well so and in certain cases there might be shortfall shortfall ke cases mein what are the actions can be taken this is a very classic kind of a question that repeats every now and then every two three term you will find both the institutes some sort of questions from over here would would you know usually come so be very careful and you know pragmatic about all of these points that we have just uh, discussed right now so having said that let me just take up a couple maybe let me just take up a question right now i thought that i would you know give it up on the forum but then decided against it let's just look at the question right now ye question is you know one of the let's just say earlier favorites of both the institutes if if i may say just one second <laughs> yeah it's a relatively lengthier question now while this question comes you know much later in the chapter of risk i would rather want to discuss it right now so that you know you guys have a understanding is this you know acha ek second i think it might be might not be and and i'll take the questions in just a second just give me one second guys ek second yeah so this is a part of your syllabus as a full question it comes much later but uh, let's just you know have at least some bit of understanding and discussion about it right now so that benefits as an entire you know premise can be taken care of and we can say the benefits may were absolutely clear and we'll also look at valuation in just a bit uh, uh, you know of this just let me know if it is clear for you to see visible if it is you know visible enough just uh, reply yes in the meantime i think i missed out a few questions taking out insurance for meeting shortfall was a ho gaya tha are there any disadvantage of uh, setting up trust so it's a very good question are there any disadvantages of setting up trust um i would rather request that you guys also take a crack at it there can be one disadvantage which i can think of it is you know it creates a kisi ne likha tha and i didn't say it immediately someone had said that 
it leads to uh me someone had said how management becomes easier management does not become easier management becomes slightly more complex uh, in a case wherein you know uh, your ek second someone has said all right so i have zoomed it up a little more and in some time i'll just move on uh, slightly lower so someone said that management becomes clear that is absolutely wrong having a trust structure kind of increases the increases the complexity of your management second thing can be cost related so when i was saying that you know there you need to have a separate set of trustees you need to have a separate set of uh, fund managers who are you know guiding behind it you need to publish your reports and all of those things that of course leads to an increase in the cost ye cost jo increase ho raha hai who is bearing the ultimate burden of it me as the as an employer right because it does not really stem down to me agar wo cost wa incur nahi hoga i may end up getting some incremental benefit so you need to be careful about it that there is an incremental cost which is a cost to both the employer and an employee in one one or the other ways and it increases the management complexity as well uh, which are basically two disadvantages that i can at least immediately think of in short in both dc and db both employer and employee make contribution right now that is what i want uh, a proper question and uh, you know this is let's just say the ultimate question within this in case of both dc and db schemes both employer and employees make contribution and don't misunderstand this before we kind of look at that question it's it's a very good and a valid question in case of a dc scheme to bahut simple hai how the contributions are made everything is basically defined it can be that only i am making contribution india ka rule hai 12% plus 12% and that is fixed there is certain benchmark there is a threshold how much if it exceeds a certain amount you have to pay a certain tax those are separate there can be a hypothetical jurisdiction wherein only employer makes contribution there can be a hypothetical jurisdiction where only employee makes contribution but either ways i will have that understanding of who is making the contribution because the scheme rules are very transparent on that kon kitna contribute kar raha is the basic let's just say premise in an entire dc scheme you will definitely know that no matter what that's the first level of knowledge that should be there if nothing is given yes it's a valid assumption to make that both employer and employee are making contribution to it that's the first thing second thing is db scheme and i'm very glad that you have this doubt that in a db scheme employee is also contributing abhi tak i have just shown you and and i don't know how this question came abhi tak i just showed you that you know db scheme sponsor makes the contribution sponsor is nothing but 99% of the case let's just think of sponsor as an employer db scheme has sponsor makes the contribution sponsor is your employer why did you have this doubt that you know employee is also making contribution one way or the other it's a right way to think about it uh logically it can be correct it can be incorrect depends upon your vision right so yes employee is also making contribution is my stance at it can someone try to you know take a uh, you know just a jab at how do you think employee is also making a contribution in case of a db scheme anyone any ideas नहीं मे बी एस अ पर्सन सी इफ इट इज अर्सेंट ऑफ सैलरी अगर वैसा होगा तो इट इज ऑलवेज अम इफ इट इज लाइक यू नो पर्टिकुलर परसेंटेज इज गोइंग आउट ऑफ सैलरी एंड इफ इट इज ट्रांसपेरेंट एंड मेड एब्सोलूटली क्लियर इन दैट केस इट इज ऑलवेज बट आई आई गेट इट आई थिंक यू आर थिंकिंग ऑन अ डिफरेंट लेंस दैट इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी एज वेल इट कैन ऑल्सो बी दैट यू आर अ मेंबर ऑफ अ डीबी स्कीम इट्स इट्स अ गुड थॉट प्रोसेस यू आर मेंबर ऑफ अ डीबी स्कीम योर फॉर्मुला ऑफ कैलकुलेशन इज बेसिकली यू नो प्री प्री डिटर्मिंड that you will get let's just say 1 lakh rupees at the point of retirement every month but at the same time you are making certain contributions which are deducted from your salary today as a part of contribution yes that is a possibility and this does not mean it's a hybrid scheme and it does not mean it's a dc scheme as well it continues to remain a db scheme despite you making partial contributions toward it because it's not getting the amount of salary which you would otherwise get now that is the be best possible answer to this he your in certain cases where it's a direct one like aditya just mentioned life is absolutely easy you know the contributions that you are making the other one is that you may not necessarily directly know the amount that you are contributing towards it but you are indirectly making some contribution which can if, if i just give you this example let's say tcs may tcs has no db scheme and let's just say uh, there is another or let's let me take six deduction from salary made by employee so let's just take an example of company a company b keep life very simple company a pays i am graduate they hire i am grad graduates and let's just say they pay them 25 lakhs company b they pay 30 lakhs right work is exactly the same the employee satisfaction is exactly the same the overall cost to company 
at the company wide level is also exactly the same at least you know when you're doing some numerical calculation the reason being very simple that they are a part of a d b scheme and they are a part of part of a dc scheme so you indirectly without the particular knowledge might be you know indirectly contributing toward a towards a particular defined benefit scheme which is not directly known to you by way of you know percentage deduction from salary but you are indirectly getting a lesser salary because you are a part of a db scheme that is also a possibility now this kind of question does not come in the exam but if you are able to understand this as well your entire you know thought process or understanding of db scheme versus dc scheme what db scheme is what dc scheme is all of those things will be absolutely clear what is a trust what is a trust structure who are trustees who are sponsors advantages disadvantages what is the benefit of db scheme what is the disadvantage of dc scheme everything will be absolutely clear and that is what this particular question is all about so i am going to give you maybe it's 11 12 uh at 11 16 i will just you know move downwards and show you this particular thing tab tak aap itna pad lo let's just say itna yes part a and part b Let's just read up this. This is the entire background, and there, there is a there are a couple of questions. I'm going to go give you two three minutes. Uh, should not ideally take you longer time than that, and within that time frame, try to develop which is a DB scheme, which is a DC scheme, and all of uh, uh, that. And once you have had an understanding of what's a D, which one is a DB scheme and a DC scheme, just let me know on the chat box. But don't type in before eleven sixteen. Yeah, eleven fifteen. Let's just put it that way. I want to see other people. So take your time. have a proper reading at it and whatever thought process come just note it down i'm going to go on mute for the next 3 4 minutes
All right, guys. Perfect. Kisi ko bhi isme koi bhi doubt or do let me know. I'm pretty sure that after spending close to two hours on a you know spread across two days, there should ideally not be any doubt on this. And trust me, this is like the toughest question that there is on a DB scheme and a DC scheme identification. Had I given this to you yesterday, probably it, it's a possibility that you might have had some bit of confusion. But right now we are at a you know at a at, at a place where ideally there should not be any confusion between which one is which. पीछे का बैकग्राउंड इन्फॉर्मेशन में सम बिट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन इज काइंड ऑफ लाइक अ व्हाइट नॉइज इट्स नॉट रियली रिक्वायर्ड इन दैट सेंस बट आफ्टर यू हैव रेड ए एंड बी एंड यू हैव अंडरस्टूड दोस वेरी वेल इट विल इट शुड आइडियली बी एब्सोल्युटली क्लियर टू यू दैट ए इज नथिंग बट अ डीबी स्कीम एंड बी इज नथिंग बट अ डीसी स्कीम एंड इफ यू आर एबल टू क्रैक दिस एंड यू हैव द कॉन्फिडेंस दैट यू नो विद 100% सर्टेनटी यू आर एबल टू क्रैक दिस एंड ऐसा कुछ भी अगर यू नो सिमिलर क्वेश्चन कम्स योर Uh, kind of certain that you'll be able to crack that. That's you know where we want to be, and it's it's a safe zone for us. So identification of A being a DB scheme, B being a DC scheme is basically all that is out of this question. The question is basically bifurcated into two buckets. Risk is fine; we don't really have to look at that uh, immediately. But it says it bo in both the cases, any proceeds would be payable to the horse's owner, who would use them on the behalf of the horse. measures would be taken to ensure that any payments are actually provided uh, are actually used to provide uh, for the care of horses and, and and you know not taken by the uh, owners and of course you can't give the money to horse you have to give it to the owners who will ultimately take care of the uh, horses right so if at all if it is a db scheme the benefits are fixed for as long as the horse lives just like it has been provided until the death you will provide you know with that provide it with a certain amount and in certain situations when it's where in it's a, a, a b fund which is basically a defined contribution one there's a separate you know account created for each and every individual that itself should, should mean that it's a dc scheme and the accumulated value is given to the owner of the horse who basically takes care of the horse after that now it says and this is the kind of question that you need to be prepared for discuss the relative attractions of each proposal in terms of providing suitable benefits for horses retiring at age of 14 or on earlier certified retirement now can someone tell me what is the question actually asking you discuss the relative attraction of each proposal discuss the relative attraction of each proposal how will you answer this question it should be relatively easy you know easier to understand right now but ab aapka structure kya hoga answer what 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 is going to be your the structure of answer over here advantages of db and dc schemes so half of you have so far said advantages and disadvantages and half of you have said advantages only so should i be just giving advantages because see if it, in a way you are right in saying that when i'm giving advantage of a and giving advantage of b basically disadvantages kind of you know indirectly covered but your answers should they include advantage disadvantage advantage disadvantage separately are there four buckets or are there two buckets it's kind of divided right now i want others to answer as well should there only be two buckets or should there be uh, both advantages and disadvantages okay this is the most divided that i have seen so far exactly one person says advantage and uh, yeah so aditya has given the be best answer so far and i'll tell you it says attractions means advantage only that is absolutely correct but the entire ask of the question changes and let me tell you to those who are writing only advantage of a and b aap panch marks ka attempt karo which is if you remember the first class which we had discussed cp1 is not difficult because you don't know what to do about it it's also very difficult because you are not able to crack what is the ask out of it now attractions means only advantage that is absolutely correct tell me one word as a result of which you have to give both advantage and disadvantage us ek word ki wajah se sab kuch change ho gaya if i remove that word not discuss yes relative is the word relative coming together with discuss basically changes the entire premise of this right so first thing that you need to be very you know apprehensive of over here is the word discuss whenever the word discuss basically comes it so when you're discussing what comes is you know i mean up you discuss when in literal sense when you're talking about the word discuss you're having a proper discussion right it's a to and fro it's a dialogue it can't really be just you know one thought process so it will usually the word discuss 
will itself give you a lot of room for writing a lot. Describe hota to it would have been a different thing. If I write describe the attractions of each proposal, it becomes a different question. But the question is discuss the relative attractions. So whenever you are talking about if I say discuss the relative attraction of something with with something, you will say that okay, relativity. The word relative in, in itself means that you are supposed to compare. So whenever you are comparing, you will basically present advantages and disadvantages of both uh, the points over here. And if if you remember, there was this. Agar aap September 2023 ka paper dekho, that takes it to a next level itself, wherein when you look at the entire question, it does not look like they're asking both advantage and disadvantage, but people got half the marks for one simple reason that they wrote only advantages. And 99% of the people I think would have done that. Anyways, to be on the safer side over here, it says discuss the relative attractions of each proposal in terms of providing suitable benefits for horses, retiring at the age of 13. In order to attempt for 10 marks, you have to write about advantages and disadvantages of a DB scheme and advantages and disadvantages of a DC scheme. Just a very few cleanup points. Do it after the class uh, by yourself. Just remember a few things. Don't make it look like super generic. We are not comparing DC versus DB. We are comparing scheme A versus scheme B. So have that at the back of your minds as well. Horse and you know payment to the individuals, contributions made to a separate fund, all of those things need to come out of your answer. So whenever I read the answer, I should also have this, you know, stem at the back of the mind, I should have this understanding that you're answering to this particular question. Despite understanding that, you know, it's a it's a relative attraction, which means advantage, disadvantage, advantage, disadvantage. And despite attempting for that, you might not get more than six if you are doing a simple plain vanilla comparison of a DB scheme versus DC scheme, because they're not asking this. They're asking you the relative attraction of each of the proposals. So you have to compare proposal A, proposal B. And I have told you guys already as well, ki question padne pe bhi mistakes hote hain. And despite me telling you this thing that, you know, I, I must have told you five times, 10 times by now, that you have to answer according to the question. But trust me, in the exam, still I find people who end up giving generic answers. So be very careful about these two, three things. Identification, absolutely correct. Nobody was wrong in the identification of the premise of the question. Pura background understanding was absolutely correct. You did all the hard work with, you know, the first 400 words or whatever. But just because of these first four words, half the people made the mistake of, you know, attempting only for five marks. And half of that will also make the mistake of writing super generic answer. And once you do that, sab kuch padke, sab karke, you will not end up getting more than four. Trust me. So we have to move out of that zone to this zone. How will you do that? After the class is done, take out 15 more minutes. It can't take you more than 15, 20 Manlo max and write out the proper answer to this if you can. If not full proper answer, take out 10 minutes and at least write a structure to it. Ki aap kya kya likhoge, and then compare it to the uh, uh, you know answers. You know the exact term and the exact paper. It's April 2012, uh, question number 5, CP1, paper 1. I'll note it down over here as well. CP1, paper 1, April 2012. <coughs> so that covers most of the things that we're supposed to understand within, you know, what, what a benefit scheme is, DB scheme, DC scheme. Kya attractiveness hota hai and, and we have not yet covered it in entirety. Huh? It comes from a much later chapter. So don't worry even if you're not able to get a few points. But for the sake of completeness, we are at a position where we should ideally be able to cover up everything. Even if not, it will come later on. So you don't have to really worry too much about it. There are other few points which comes within a part of benefits. So we know what benefits are. We know what these members are. Uh, you know what 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 you know how contributions are made, how benefits are decided. What are the different varieties of risks? Who bears which risk in which situation? And this, you know, risk wala thing can help you guys a lot in being able to identify the relative attractiveness of a DB scheme versus the DC scheme. Kisme kon kya risk bear karta hai? That is the biggest. And, you know, of course, advantages will come together with it. DB scheme ka biggest advantage, if I have to talk about the biggest advantage is I have no, no longevity risk, I have no investment risk, and I will get money as long as I survive. So there is no headache or no burden at the back of my mind. I cannot outlive the funds. Until and unless, of course, my expenses are too much. That's a different thing whatsoever. Uska koi ilaj nahi hai. But, uh, you know, everything, you know, pari pasu is exactly the same. I can say that DB scheme mein me, 
as a, as an employer i mean me as an employee my risks are subdued because i know that if even if i live 60 years after retirement or 70 years or 10 years my life is going to be exactly the same because i keep getting a specific amount and you know dc scheme ka wo biggest disadvantage and there are multiple other disadvantages so don't want to waste time discussing the same thing again we looked at these as well what are the different ways in which benefits can be provided now let's look at the final uh, uh, part of uh, uh, you know the content of this particular chapter and then we'll move on to uh, calculations uh, which can be done uh, which which need to be done which is the part of chapter number 23 uh role of employer should be clear role of employees should sorry role of uh, your government scheme that should be absolutely clear now in relation to financing of benefits you have to be you know these are not uh, these are not stems matlab these are not uh, you, let's just say the points that you need that are covered in book separately but these are things that you need to remember very thoroughly uh, because questions may directly or indirectly come from over here right so why employers finance benefit for employees now this is one such question which can possibly come as a part of you know a question ki why is it happening at the first place why is why is an employer financing the benefit on behalf of employees so th- like you just discussed there are multiple reasons for that this is a very practical question but because of the relative repetitiveness of this in the past recently nahi aa raha utna but pehle aata tha so for that reason you just you know separately pointed it out over here there can be compulsion <coughs> or encourage from the state state is providing it you know state has basically created a regulation as a result of which the employer is asked to do so why would employer finance benefit for the employees number one because it is mandatorily required as a part of the regulation or as a part of the state second can be desired to attract and retain good quality employees a desire to look uh, after employees and their dependents financially beyond the level provided by the state and to pool expenses and expertise now the fourth one i would say is a separate point you are pooling it all uh, together as a result of which there is an you know uh, increasing advantage because you know when you are pooling it up at a lot of uh, uh, pooling it up for a lot of people basically the cost get divided into a lot of people so you get uh, economies of scale so first is economies of scale uh, or rather first one is it is mandatory second one is it is economies of scale second and third point here there is a specific term note it down right now whenever a question comes which has a similar direction to this this word needs this key word needs to come out of your answer so two and three point if i have to summarize it is called paternalistic behavior and if you just open up the answers and if you do a control f and write paternalistic or paternal you will find that the word must have repeated you know at least you know once every two terms 10 12 bar aapko dikhega the paternalism as a behavior and they, they expect this uh, keyword out of you so just whenever the uh, idea over here is employer is providing something over and above what is required or you know there can be certain other uh, uh, direction of the question wherein you are providing over and above what is required the idea over here is paternalistic behavior because you act like parents and you know you know kind of taking care of them that is why you are providing over and above what is actually required or expected out of you so the point number 3 in specific and maybe 2 and 3 combined basically come as one single keyword which 100% of you have to write if a question like this comes and that is paternalistic behavior and you will realize later on that this word can be used in uh, uh, multiple places you just be very clear about this key term ye likhte hi 0.5 milega nahi likhoge to nahi milega so be that is why i am you know uh, repeating the benefit of this next one is flexible benefit scheme now as you would see on the questions that have been uploaded on your aiq forum a lot of questions initially used to come earlier on you know what flexible benefit schemes are what are the advantages of having a flexible benefit scheme in what way can you have a flexible benefit scheme let me just discuss that advantage is something which i personally believe you can take care of because it's a very practical and open ended question for that matter and the premise of the question changes from you know question to question question a ka premise versus question b ka premise will change the direction of your answer but it won't change the essence right so a flexible benefit scheme is basically wherever you are providing flexibility to the employee of deciding between alternatives right usually an employer can probably legally get away by providing you with salary that you know you work for me and every single day i'm going to pay you an x amount say suppose for every day of work i'll pay you 5000 rupees something like that however they provide you with sick leaves they provide you with incremental leaves they can provide you uh, leaves against reduction of salary they can also provide you salary against 
uh, uh, you know leaves not being taken so all of those things are basically a part of flexible benefit scheme whether it is dental care uh, or it is you know insurance scheme group insurance policy child education scheme uh, additional salary that can be provided to you some you know uh, flexibility over here and there maternity benefits and and you know there are multiple other ways there are i mean today there must be hundreds of different varieties of all of these things now these are all a part of a flexible benefit scheme and wherever you have the flexibility to you know move between uh, uh, you know one thing to the other that is basically when you are getting this uh, benefits for yourself within this just be very clear what are the advantages disadvantages and within this you can also you know the word paternalistic can repeat many times uh, uh, for that matter why are you providing some flexibility because you want to be paternalistic and of course you want to retain good quality employees you want to boost their morale uh, you know take care of their dependents beyond what is required again paternalism so there are these few advantages disadvantages may of course you can write about costs uh, being higher than anticipated uh, you know misutilization of certain resources all of those things can basically come within this so you will look at a lot of questions historically used to come last few terms not there but that does not mean it cannot come in the autumn right so we need to be prepared for that now scheme provision this is something that we have indirectly already covered when we were discussing about the word sponsor sponsor mein maine bataya tha ki there are multiple ways in which sponsors can act so if you look at it there is a single employer scheme and there can be a multi employer scheme a single employer scheme if you just read the definition the financing of the scheme could subject to the legislation be shared between the employer and employee who will receive the benefits second one it says a multiple uh, a multi employer scheme wherein a multi employer scheme is a benefit scheme set up jointly with other employers often from the same industry just remember the exam the, the hypothetical example on all india insurance dd scheme whatever it is so what it does is there are multiple ins- multiple companies or multiple players from the same industry who basically come together set up one particular fund in order to ensure that number one costs can be taken care of because you know the entire costs get divided into a lot of individual so it is cost effective there is economies of scale there is lesser let's just say risk as well for you as employees for employees the risk is relatively lesser because even if your employer fails you at least have an entire fund uh, being financed by a lot of players from the industry as a result of which more more or less your your benefits are basically you know going to be settled even if there is a reduction it won't be 10 20% it might be 1 to 5% something of that sort in in the event of one uh, uh, you know one of the players in the industry failing hypothetically speaking if there are 50 employers or 50 companies one fails you can anticipate a 2% fall something like that <clears throat> next one it says there is a disadvantage more care must be taken over allocating the liability for fund uh, for funding defined benefits particularly in the event of insolvency of one of the sponsors now now basically what is happening over here is agar ek employee agar if there is an employer which gets insolvent in that case we were all the while we were talking about the advantage of the fact that uh, even if the employer fails your money is still secure however if there is a disproportionate allocation coming from certain companies and there is higher probability of certain other companies getting bust in that case there can be a disadvantage to certain individuals within this as well now aditi to answer your question why will they provide for someone else's benefit because they are not essentially providing for someone else's the fund is created by all the companies which means all of them are collectively contributing towards the fund so that all of them can collectively reap the benefits so hdfc life the contribute karta hai icici prudential also contributes other life insurance company or 50 life insurance companies contribute 1 1 rupee each hypothetically now even if hdfc life tomorrow fails for whatever reason the entire collection of money is basically attributable to all the 50 companies or employees of all the 50 con- uh, uh, companies so for that reason you are basically you know the entire uh, this thing is fixed now your question if i look at it from the disadvantage stem yes there is this disadvantage that despite hdfc failing and not receiving contributions from it later on it can you can't really call it a mutual mutual is a separate uh, thing altogether it's a trust uh, basis only however what essentially ends up happening over here is even in even in the event of one company falling and let's just say hdfc life was let's just say the biggest one okay their contributions was the biggest and let's just say their employee count is also biggest out of 10000 employees 2000 unke hi hai in in the 
so they had a disproportionate share in contribution they had a disproportionate share in uh, let's just say management and everything now all of a sudden if the biggest player is driven out it will still create a lot of you know ripple effect it's not easy to provide for the remaining people based on ki 80 people are contributing and 100 people are enjoying the benefits so it's not one to one anymore second thing is iska ulta bhi socho even if let's just say ab insurance companies don't fail every day in india but let's just take an example of say suppose textile right there are 100 different textile companies say suppose reliance textile is the biggest textile company and then there are 99 smaller players every now and then out of those 99 smaller players every year five come five go five come five go right and reliance has the biggest number of employees over there biggest contributor and all of that now reliance will be at a biggest disadvantage why every year few companies are coming maybe providing some some contribution and then going bust every five years as a result of that reliance is basically the one who is contributing and paying for the benefits of a lot of these smaller companies which keep coming in and going out now despite you have gone out of the ecosystem despite you failing your employees is the the benefits of those employees is still fixated because of the fact that the fund at the industry level is still operational so those are the kind of thought process that 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 needs to come ki although yes my benefits are guaranteed there can still be multiple problems associated with it because of disproportionality because of uh, lower you know shelf life because of you know coming in going out all of those things can ultimately create a lot of problem within the industry and for a lot of players within the industry any questions up until now do let me know if there's anything which is unclear do let me know immediately because we will be moving on to the next uh thing i think yes benefit me more or less we have covered everything mutual wala i have said it is not a mutual matlab agar aapko mutual soch ke if you are able to crack it it's fine but you can't write the word mutual it acts like a mutual but it is not a mutual technically ठीक है, so I will take this as no questions up until now. You can come back to me later, later on as well with certain questions. If you want, we can discuss this as well, but really not yet. See, it's a very quick one. Role of individuals, role of financial institutions. Individuals may one kind of question usually comes out, and I think we have discussed one question out of it. So let me just take that premise. In case of individuals, what you do is you keep contributing. You uh, you know accumulate a certain fund. biggest or let's just say the most classical example used today is basically a mutual fund you keep contributing 10000 rupees a month anticipating that there will be a sufficient corpus available to you at the point of your retirement if there is a if there is some need god forbid at after 10 years from now as well you at least have certain corpus available for you so your saving for yourself is going to come in handy for multiple reasons whatsoever so you as an individual can keep contributing now one kind of question that you know changes it stands slightly you know here and there but keeps repeating and we have already discussed that is uh, a house basically if you remember there was that one old man who had a house he was selling that particular house and there were two three things that he was supposed to do one thing was buying a uh, no buying a smaller house for himself paying for the emi of two two of his sons and uh, having sufficient corpus for his retirement i think aisa kuch tha these three things i think chapter 2 or chapter 3 uh emotional needs financial needs wo wale chapter mein such kind of questions to repeat every now and then and you have to also be prepared to look at buying a house or let's just say having a bigger house as a benefit or let's just say or as a contribution or as a accumulation of fund that you are creating for yourself so that you can utilize it at the point of your retirement to pay for your benefits you can mod you can you know sell your house and get a lot of funds and using that funds you can take care of a lot of expenses one other example if i remember there was this one question wherein you know there was an old aged person and uh, he had sold off his house but he would continue to live in that particular house till his death aisa kuch ek they created something and you know i can keep discussing but there is no limitation to understanding so you have to think for yourself i'm re- i'll repeat the question the direction of the question was mr x who is 60 years old has a property worth 1 million rupees theek okay? hai so let me just write it down here as well mr x hai uh he is 60 years old has a house worth 
let's just say one million rupees or one million dollars whatever this is here mr a 60 year old house worth one million dollar he basically sells it at uh uh you know cash consideration of say suppose 500 thousand dollars this is on the basis that he would continue to live in the house till his death after his death only the house will pass on to the buyer mr x uses 500k as a retirement purpose chalo itna information is provided of course in much more coherent way just like you had a look at that first wall example but this was the summary of that particular question uh, uh, similar numbers right so mr x has 60 years old he has just retired he has a house worth 1 million he has sold this house for a consideration of 500000 which is half the market price but there is one condition attached to it which is basically that till he survives he will continue to live in that house without paying any rent towards whatsoever till the moment mr x is alive he will live in that house is not going to vacate it only after his death the new buyer can basically uh, come in and get that particular house and mr x is going to use that 500k towards uh, his retirement purpose now just take out a couple of minutes and can you just give me advantage of this arrangement iska bhi wahi discuss the relative merit something of that uh, can basically come out of this can you give me the advantage of this arrangement for mr x disadvantage for x advantage for buyer disadvantage for buyer or you can also i mean key considerations kya kya hone chahiye so start off with the advantage of this arrangement for mr x very quickly <clears throat> First one, what do you think can be the advantage of this arrangement for Mr. X? Relative merits or whatever. And pick up a point exhausted before you move on to the other one. Gets money to provide for living. Perfect. Uh, if there is no dependent, now this is this is good. Thinking out of the box, but I'm not sure if it is correct. If there is no dependent, the corpus will provide for living. Uh, yes, you can explain that point. Of course, I'm not asking for explicit, but I, I just need directional points. So yes, this is the correct way to think about it. Mr. X receives 500k immediately, providing him with a retirement purpose that can be used for medical costs and other needs. Okay. He'll be able to live in his own house to which he may be emotionally attached. Absolutely valid point. And on top of that, Hitesh, he does not have to pay rent. He still has a house to live in. So that is a very, and he can live in till his death. So that is again a very big advantage to him. He doesn't have to think about buying a different house. Absolutely correct. Mr. X can continue to live in his house for the rest of his life, provide him with stability, comfort without the need to move. Unlike a traditional reverse mortgage, he does not need to worry about the interest accumulation or repaying a uh, loan during his life. And now comparing it with a traditional reverse mortgage is, is like the last basically thing that you can do. Not really anticipating that from everyone because there can be multiple such products and not everyone is expected to know all of those products but baki sare points be correct and this is like the end of the uh, discussion iske upar kuch bhi nahi ho sakta hai. so tell me the relative disadvantage to mr x now okay aditi has already started had he sold the house he could have received a higher amount absolutely matlab plain plain vanilla common sense yes he would have received higher amount very big disadvantage valid point you get you know one mark for that he sells the house for 500 which is significantly lesser than market value this might be considered a poor financial decision uh, uh because he could have sold it for full, full value okay he no longer owns the house so he cannot sell it or borrow yes he cannot use the house now for any of his financial needs that is a very big uh, uh you know uh consideration that should be there he cannot provide he cannot you know pass on any legacy he cannot pass on any benefits he cannot uh you know contribute anything and if at all god forbid but if something bad happens to him two years from now there is at least two house tony i'm not sure of his other assets but he cannot utilize this house uh, to get some you know uh, immediate funding because that fund is already uh, taken by him one more thing you should think of is that 
अगर फाइनेंशियली बात करूं बाकी सारे पॉइंट्स हैं आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ समवन हैज यू नो डन दैट एनालिसिस बट यू आर एट लीस्ट गोइंग इन दैट डायरेक्शन आई एम सेलिंग इट फॉर 500000 व्हेन द मार्केट वैल्यू इज 1 मिलियन राइट मिस्टर एक्स शुड आल्सो लुक एट हिज लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी बिकॉज़ 500k किस चीज के लिए इफ यू लुक एट इट फाइनेंशियल टर्म्स आई एम टॉकिंग ओनली अबाउट फाइनेंशियल टर्म्स रिमूव ऑल इमोशनल नीड्स आउट ऑफ इट ही इज बेसिकली पेइंग 500k as rent for the remaining life if if you think of it is basically paying 500k as the amount of rental for the remaining life is the present value of rental that you would pay based on the remaining life of mr x equal to that if it is then well and good good financial decision but if not which is highly likely that it might not be your rental expense can't really be 50% of your overall expense when you are already 60 right so from that purpose i i would want to believe that he might have overpaid as well i'm not really sure but that thought process needs to come this is like the end of you know discussion in case of disadvantages agar you can that agar you can do that sort of financial analysis let me just quickly if he lives longer 500k may be less yes that's that's a very valid point after that dependents may need a house yes you have nothing to pass on to your dependents if he dies early the 500k might be wasted uh he feeling you know 500 might be insufficient yes so you know agar aap that's that's a very very valid point if you live for long this is the advantage and the other way around there can be a disadvantage now advantage for the buyer is that the buyer acquires the property for uh, of 1 million for you know 500k investment is secured by a tangible asset which can appreciate in value over time the buyer does not need to pay the full market value up front which could be advantageous if he is not looking to utilize the property which also means that the buyer might be someone who is looking for a house after a certain point of time right so say suppose i need a house but i need it only 20 years from now maybe i want to retire in jaipur and i want a house in jaipur but not right now i, I need it 40 years from now so if that is the situation it's a very it's, it's like a win win situation for me ki i have booked the house today for half the price and i will get it at a time which is actually when when i you know need that particular property so there can't be a better win win situation if this is the requirement of that particular individual uh disadvantage okay we started disadvantage as well the buyer cannot take the possession of the house until mr x passes away this could be many years and this could be higher than anticipated as well it is also a possibility ki buyer dies but the uh, uh, but mr x continues to live so if if that is the situation there can't be a poorer financial decision because you have already paid 500k to live in a house which you will never be able to live into uh assuming mr x continues to survive depending on the terms buyer might be responsible for some or all of the maintenance so this is this is what i this is what i you know wanted from advantage as well as disadvantage advantage to mr x can be he if at all this is disadvantage of mr buyer but for uh, uh, mr x this can be an advantage as well or a disadvantage ki who takes them who takes care of maintenance now of course we never spoke about it kahin pe bhi question mein maintenance is a word use nahi hua but this thought process needs to come that you need to pick up a point exhaust it and move on which means maintenance ko pick up karo where can you put it over there think of a house what are the costs benefits advantages disadvantages associated associated with the house pick it up write some points on that and then move on real estate market can fluctuate and uh, and the value of property could decrease by the time ye disadvantage of the buyer unable to use the house even after paying for it so yeah more or less almost like you know everything is kind of covered barring maybe two three points which probably didn't come which should have ideally other than that i think most of you guys have uh, or at least those who have answered have really answered uh, you know to the point very clear succinct to the point this is what is required uncertain regarding whether he will get the house if he sells the house on same terms to someone else there might be a chance and one more thing which surprisingly did not come was i, I can just think of it because it's a practical question if there is a house wherein mr x is living and he is not the owner of that house i need to also be aware of the fact that he might not take that level of care of that house which he otherwise would have uh, uh, had he been the owner now i am saying this because you can use the word moral hazard in this case right mr x is living in that house for free he would i mean i i don't know but he can do multiple things with that house before he dies right because he is not really concerned about it legally the ownership of that house is basically passed on based on the legal document that he has signed so my i might as a buyer think that i am buying a house worth 1 million but because of what he does to the house in the next 10 years that he survives he is not going to take proper care there can be multiple things that can happen to the house multiple damages and he is really not going to take care right because it's not his property anymore if tomorrow 
whatever happens to the house if, if there is a crack or whatever he's not really going to be concerned in like how, how much time do i have anyways why should i waste my money precious money on this resource when it is not even something that i own so maintenance ka kisi ne bola so this again was a stem that uh, uh, can i really be there and this is like the end of the uh, the story and we this is matlab a time pass ke liye i'm not using this ye similar question has come in the past i really don't know when but uh, uh, aise questions are and these are the kind of question that usually come 